error messages, and idiosyncrasies. Sometimes when you're using a graphing calculator, it can seem like you're kind of in a mist of darkness, not an understanding. Sometimes you might get a message such as this. It can be terribly frustrating. You might want to smash your calculator with this hammer. I'm telling you today, don't do it. Watch this video. We're going to be able to bring you into the clear daylight of understanding and a clear winter's day. Now, computers can be extremely frustrating. They used to give messages such as these illegal operations. You thought you'd be in jail. But no less frustrating are messages such as these in your graphing calculator. And you can do certain things that will give an error syntax message. In this case, we have 10 minus 2. Well, we think it's that, but actually this is a negative sign. We need to change that to a that negative sign to a minus sign. And when we do that, we get our operation 8. Here we have a situation where we're trying to perform an operation, but we don't have a closing parentheses in place. So we press Enter, we get this message. So whenever you see this message, press Enter, then look at what you just entered and try to see what you did that the calculator didn't understand. Okay, now one thing, our calculator is equipped to do some tremendous things, but it is not a brain. The calculator takes orders from you. You are the brains behind the calculator, and it's going to be no smarter or no more accurate than what you enable it to be. And sometimes we can give our calculator conflicting messages just like a child might get conflicting messages from a mother and a father. And we're going to give a good example of that right here. We have the parent linear function y equals x enter in y equals and we graph it and we get this message invalid dimension. Well what happened? Well let's go back to stat enter and we see nothing entered for points under L1 and L2 as coordinates and we go back to y equals and we see plot 1 is turned on. So what we're, we've asked the calculator to do, we've asked the calculator to plot points but did not provide points to be plotted. So we're, it's like asking the pig to fly. It's impossible. So in order to fix that, we can go back to stat enter. We can enter two points in this case and we see our points. So that took care of it. We ask it to plot something. There was something to plot. Fine. Or we can go back to y equals and turn off plot 1. And then it's not looking for something to plot. And so it puts y equals x there just fine. So let's stick with y equals x. Here I've graphed in red the classical linear parent function y equals x. And we see it has a classic 45 degree angle going up from left to right. But traced in blue here is that same function plotted in your graphing calculator. It does not have that classic 45 degree angle. It's a shallower angle. Well, what happens here? Well, look at your calculator view screen. It's rectangular. It's 94 pixels wide by 62 high. And if we go to our window view, we have only 20 pixels left to right. And the same thing of y min to y max. If we set our y x min as proportionate to 94, in this case we entered both of those as 9.4, negative 9.4, 9.4, and we set our y min y max proportionate to 62, and we graph it, we do get that classic 45 degree angle. And there's another way we can do it as well. We can go to zoom, which is that center function key at the top near the view screen, and then go down to 5, square. And what that does, it squares up the dimensions of the view screen by keeping y min and y max at their standard, but adjusting x min and x max for the greater width as opposed to the height to, to bring out the proportions. Now let's try to divide 8 by 0. We get error divided by 0. Now we've, again, we've asked the calculator to do something that's not possible for it is not defined. It's undefined by mathematics. Now here we have a quadratic function. And inside the square root, we have a discriminant. We can take the square root of a number by pressing second, then the x squared. If we, in this case, take the square root of a negative number, negative 25 in this case, we get error, non-real answer. Well, we can fix that by going to mode and going down to the number numeric mode, a plus bi, and try the same thing, we get 5i. So this is the imaginary number 5i. Let's try something else. Let's go to stat 
enter and we've entered two points here one comma six one comma negative two and we're going to find the equation of the function that it has draws a line between these two points we go to stat cal four enter and we get this error domain well let's figure out what's happened we go to y equals plot one is turned on and so we graph it and we see one point is above the other. Well, this fails the vertical line test and is therefore not a function. So we, by asking the calculator to find the function of the line between those two points, we've asked the calculator to find something, to do something that's impossible. Again, our friend the flying pig. Now, occasionally you might graph and see this message error window range. Well, in this case, if you go back to window and check, we have x min and x max the same. And so there is no area to view in the window view. Again, something impossible to do. To fix it, we need to change the x min or x max so we have a, a, an area to view. In this case, we did, and we have an area. So let's go on to the next thing. One thing in graphing that's really handy with graphing calculator is sometimes to go to second zoom, which gets us to our format menu, and we can change different things there. One thing I find particularly handy is to go to grid on. What that does, we use it in graph, we can see points like we would on lattices in a graph, and so that helps us to kind of see where we are in a graph. Now, if we go back to window view and we change X min x max to 100 at y min y max negative 100 100 and we graph it we get total black how does that happen well, what happened was is that we were asking the calculator to come up with 10,000 pixels but it only has 94 times 62 5828 so there aren't enough pixels available to put all of them we've ordered so we have total blackout we can fix it by going back and changing X scale and Y scale to 10 respectively. And now we do this, it's only asking for 400 pixels to serve as the uh, grid points. Now let's look at a system of equations, 5X minus 1, 2X plus 8. We graph these systems and we do not see the intersection point we're looking for, but we can see that it's going to be above the area of the view screen. Let's go ahead and find it by pressing second, trace, five, enter, 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 and we get, uh, we don't see the intersection, but we see the coordinates for it. They're up above the view screen here. So we can do that with our graphing calculator, even though sometimes it doesn't see the intersection, it'll still give us a solution. Now let's put another system of equation in place. 0.5x plus 6 and then negative 1 fourth x minus 6. We graph that this time we see that the solution is going to be over to the left of our visible view screen. So we're going to try the same thing by pressing second, trace, five, enter, enter, enter. And this time we get an error message. Well, what's happened when we graph it? The calculator will not calculate intersections of points to the left or to the right of the visible view screen. It will do it for above or below. So we have to go back to the window and change our X minimum. In this case, we make it negative 20 and we graph it. We can see the point. We press second, trace, five, enter, enter, enter. And we do get an intersection of negative 16 comma negative two. So again, we can't find the solution if it's if the solution is to the left or the right of the visible view screen but we can find it if it's above or below an idiosyncrasy of your graphic calculator now we're going to try another system of equations this time not linear equations but we have the quadratic parent function and the inverse uh, function parent one over x and we graph those two and we try to find the intersection by pressing second trace five enter enter and no matter how many times we press enter, we get, we get this message. It doesn't go any further. So the calculator's stuck. To unstick it, we're going to go back to window view. We're going to change x min to 0 and y min to 0. And we see the intersection point. Press second, trace, 5, enter, enter, enter. And there's something about the symmetry of 
we see the intersection point x equals one, y equals one. There's something about the symmetry of these systems that makes makes it not right. And so if we go ahead to window view and change things a little bit, it can fix it so we can we can see the intersection point, find it.